are discussing the problems of the paint industry. We have Mr. Bharuka, the managing director of Kansai Nerulak, and Mr. Nagendra Kumar, who is of the CBEC and widely recognized as one of the best experts on GST at the moment. Uh, gentlemen, thank you very much for joining me. Well, uh, Mr. Bharuka, in the first place, do you think industry is somewhat prepared, 90% there in terms of uh, the technology and in terms of uh, uh, preparation, the, the technical preparation? So, I mean, I would not like to t say that it's a blessing in disguise uh, for a simple reason, you know, otherwise we can keep delaying this. So, from an industry perspective, I think we have been always wanting GST be, to be implemented as early as possible. Unfortunately, the way we work uh, as a country, uh, the laws are still not clear and uh, because of that, I think preparedness of industry also is slightly delayed. At the same time, let me also, you know, admit I think industry is also not fully aware of the implication of GST and how it is going to impact them, how they need to handle the entire ecosystem. It is not only their own preparedness, preparedness of their vendors, preparedness of the dealer network, right? And these are some of the big challenges I think we are facing. And also, how do you educate your own employees, right? And this, I think this becomes the biggest challenge for us. Otherwise, as you rightly said, yes, some of the large organizations are ready in terms of the infrastructure, but till law becomes clear, I think we don't know what to put in the system. Till law becomes clear is very wisely put uh, and well put, uh, Mr. Bharuka. Uh, Mr. Nagendra Kumar, on that note, let me come with a common man's problem, which will also be industry's problem. Uh, for instance, uh, say an Airtel phone, which is sold perhaps in Bombay, to a customer, okay, maybe in Bombay, but he has gone to Delhi and he has made a call to someone who is uh, in Calcutta. Will all the SGST guys lay a claim to the money? Uh, well, I think in so far as where does the tax revenue accrue to will largely depend upon the ultimate place of consumption. Since GST is a destination-based consumption tax, the tax revenue will have to go to the state of where ultimately the consumer has consumed the service. So where the call has landed in this yes. case? Basically, the place of supply rules which have been put in the public domain as a part of the IGST law, we have said in case of a telecommunication service like a mobile telephony, if it is actually a service relating to a subscriber who is on a postpaid basis, we would say the place of supply is the address on record of the subscriber. In this case, if the person is actually an Airtel subscriber, and his address on record is, let us say, is in Calcutta, and that tax should legitimately go to the state of West Bengal, where the consumer is ultimately located. Whether he is consuming the service while he is on international roaming, or in a domestic roaming, or it is in, on travel. You, you are giving me an answer to a, a very specific problem. Right. But will these questions keep coming? Or is there one uh, answer for all questions? Otherwise, you know, what would happen is, Calcutta will demand, Bombay will demand, Bangalore will demand and at every point it will be answered. But it will mean an appellate authority, it will mean 90 days, 180 days, 2 years and money stuck. So are you seeing that scenario? Yes, in so far as the place of supply provisions are concerned in the IGST Act, which has been brought as a part of the provisions, there is a complete consensus between the state and the centre in so far as the place of supply provisions are concerned. Now these provisions are also in the public domain and the industry is well aware of exactly what are the consequences of these provisions. There could be possibly competing claims in case of place of supply in cases which we have not actually contemplated today. But these are issues which will actually be come into focus when actually the provisions are applied to a given practical business situations. But what and precedents have to evolve. Evolve and place of supply provisions, let me tell you, is an evolving concept even internationally. Are you answered, Mr. Baruka? No, actually, you know, uh, uh, we are, you know, worried with the interpretation. Mm -hmm. you know, while I mean, you know, the intention may be very well, you know, written, very well understood. Right. Uh, but whether it is understood in the same way by the in all the states, right? right? Because every state will interpret in a different way, and that is our biggest worry. Ki, as you rightly said, there would be a dispute at every stage, and then how do you handle it? And even industry is not very clear as of now. So if, if industry is not clear and the state interpretation is different, then I think we will end up with a lot of disputes. And that is the biggest worry we have, that we are now perhaps three months ahead of implementation of GST and we are not clear how it would be interpreted. Okay. Uh, well, uh, Mr. Bharuka, you spoke about training your staff. 
uh, is there any thought given to training the informal units you handle? It is possible that a supplier of a small tin or a lid or a printing of, uh, you know, the paper, there could be small industries that you are uh, in touch with. They may not even have a chartered accountant or a tax consultant as of now. Uh, have you all thought of that or will you just say, I am going to the formal units uh, to avoid problems? No, I think if we, if we take that attitude, then you know, we will suffer. So, so certainly, you know, this is one of the very important uh, agenda on uh, our book. And we have already started working you know, with our vendors. In fact, we are calling for a vendor conference purely on a GST. How do we tell, how do we teach them what they need to do? Maybe they are aware, maybe they are not aware, but we need to tell them. We need to work with even our dealer network, you know, what, how they will handle. But as I said, till we are very clear about the law, how do you conduct this conference and how do you inform them? But we are very clear, we need to educate every one of them who deal with us. Okay. Uh, well, uh, do you think state VAT commissioners are uh, technically equipped uh, or will they create disputes rather than solve them? In fact, uh, to tell that the state do not have any experience in services is not fully correct. Today, state VAT administrations do levy tax on entertainment sector, luxury tax and even on short stay accommodation, etc. Uh, admission to amusement parks, etc. They do have experience in administering taxes, but administering services in a manner in which the GST will mandate, yes, they require to be uh, adequately trained and uh, we have, uh, uh, as a part of the GST uh, capacity building within the organization, we have trained around 30,000 VAT officers in the model GST provisions along with the central government officers. This training program has been conducted uh, over a period of four months. The state VAT officers have been trained on the place of supply provisions. Additionally, I think uh, the, the legislation what we have placed uh, in the public domain, there will be a lot of uh, uh, training modules will be developed. In fact, e-learning modules are being developed and taxpayer education guides will be provided. I think we, we look at that, I think the state VAT authorities will be completely equipped to tax even the services, whether it is uh, within the state, I think they should be pushed to do it. One of the uh, advantages until now, with even with that, was that you had this large taxpayer units. So, a top 100, 200 of them were not visited by state officials and central officials. Will the large taxpayer unit practice continue? Well, I think uh, the Central Board of Access and Customs experimented by establishing the last tax units in the country from the year 2006 onwards. Uh, the experiment has uh, borne good results in places like Bangalore and Chennai and Mumbai. Uh, no doubt a concept like this where under one single window the taxpayer is being provided all services would definitely benefit in the post-GST regime as well. But we need to keep it in mind that the GST is going to be levied at two government levels, one at the central and at the state level. While a large taxpayer unit at the central level could be a single point interface for the taxpayer, the fact remains that if that large taxpayer has got uh, establishment in different states where they have to pay the SGST tax, perhaps they may still have to report to the concerned tax authorities in the state. So they could get visits and questions from states as it well? It is possible, but I think so far as the centre is concerned, I think it could provide a single window facility irrespective of the location where they are assessed to the CGST across the country. Not I a very satisfactory answer, Mr. Baruka. No, what we are saying is because, you know, the debit and credit will get reconciled. And if it gets reconciled, why we even, even need an audit? So why only large scale? I am saying even the dealer network or for that matter, even a, a, a small vendor should never be visited. I mean, it should be exactly like, you know, income tax. When we are saying that 5% scrutiny will be conducted, but even 5% is a very large number on a very large base, right? Because a lot of informal sector will become a formal. So the base is going to become a larger. So if really we want this to be successful, right, in the minds of the, I think, uh, all the uh, traders, then it is very important that we send a very positive signal that initially perhaps you would not be visiting them, you would not be harassing them, and perhaps instead of 5%, maybe you'll have only 1% of the audit to be conducted. Okay, exactly that, sir. There is a self-policing, as Mr. Baruka puts it. Will we see that being adopted, that industry is in a self-policing mode? So, visits will 
not at all be uh, resorted to, at least for the first year. In fact, uh, if you look at uh, exactly today, the taxes being assessed, administered in the country, be it custom duties or excise or service tax or VAT, they are all self-assessed tax. The taxpayer themselves assess the liability, claim the entitlement like input tax credit, etc., and pay the net tax liability. <coughs> In the post GST also the self-assessment is going to be the mode. Additionally, since invoice level uploading is going to happen with regard to the tax paid at the supplier level, which is entitled to the credit at the recipient level, and that gets matched in the system automatically, such verifications will be absolutely not required in the post GST regime. You are prepared for that? You yes. will not visit? To that extent, I think the verification through audit or scrutiny will come down. So this is going to be definitely going to be a, a, a taxpayer convenience. Additionally, the audit as on today what we are looking at in the GST is going to be risk based. There is going to be the selection of the taxpayer for audit would be basically dependent on the empirical data with the department already has processing. Yes, as you rightly said, in the initial period of rollout of GST, since a lot of hand holding will be required and the taxpayer need to be educated about his entitlements and also the liabilities, I think the department could look at administratively a solution wherein too many audits may not be ordered in the initial period and also the enforcement provisions could be kept at a lower rate so that the taxpayer is getting adjusted to a new tax. A certain system. leniency. Yes. Thank you very much Mr. Baruka and Mr. Nagy. Thank you.